Natural gas deposits have been found in a hard-packed, fine-grained sedimentary rock called shale. These shale deposits were formed millions of years ago and cover much of the United States in what are referred to in the oil and natural gas industry as shale plays. Chesapeake Energy, one of the largest producers of natural gas and the most active driller of new wells in the U.S., has leasehold in six major plays, the Barnett, Bossier, Eagle Ford, Fayetteville, Haynesville, and Marcellus Shales. Chesapeake believes that producing natural gas in a manner that meets or exceeds local and state regulations is a top priority. The importance we place on our process has earned us a strong reputation among our peers and numerous awards for our environmental, health, and safety methods. We take pride in our best management practices, which help us produce a safe and economically viable resource to meet our nation's energy needs. Chesapeake also uses the latest technology, such as 3D seismic imaging, to explore for and produce natural gas. 3D seismic uses an energy source, such as vibrator trucks, to produce sound waves that pass through the Earth and are reflected from different layers in the Earth's crust. This information is then processed into a 3D seismic volume, which gives geoscientists the ability to study natural gas reservoirs that otherwise might go undiscovered. Using this technology allows Chesapeake to locate and accurately drill for natural gas with reduced impact to the environment. Chesapeake possesses one of the largest 3D seismic libraries in the nation. When selecting areas for natural gas production, numerous factors are considered, such as access roads, existing infrastructure for natural gas transportation, power consumption, streams, wetlands, and residential areas. The topography of the land and proximity of nearby bodies of water also play an important factor in determining the placement of the rig, the production equipment, and environmental protection measures. Protective measures such as sediment and erosion control are carefully designed to meet the needs of each location while conforming to area regulatory requirements. When the area for a drilling and production site has been selected, preparations are made to support the process. First a level site must be created. Soil is stockpiled on the highest side of the site and used as a berm, similar to a dike or pond dam, to prevent water from flowing over the location. Eventually, this soil will be used for site reclamation after the well no longer produces natural gas. Crews install buffers such as silt socks, secondary earthen containment, deflection berms, and sediment traps to eliminate the potential of sedimentation and erosion. Once these are in place, the entire location is graded to create a level site. These measures work together to ensure that any potential spills will be contained on site. After all of the dirt work is complete, the cut and fill sides of the location are hydro mulched. Hydro mulching is a planting process which utilizes a slurry of seed and mulch to promote the growth of vegetation and stabilize the location with erosion control. This covers Chesapeake's environmental protection measures and best management practices put into place before the drilling rig is moved on to a location. Once the rig is set up, additional environmental protection measures will be added. After the well pad has been prepared, it's time to set up the drilling rig. This step consists of moving in the rig, assembling the rig, installing all necessary equipment, and constructing additional environmental protection measures. Assembling of the drilling rig is also known in the industry as a rig up. All the equipment needed to assemble the rig arrives by specialized trucks. Modern drilling rigs are constructed for quick assembly and disassembly and are highly modular. During the rig up, which takes up to five days, Chesapeake oversees the process to ensure that all health and safety standards are met according to state regulations. The initial portion of the rig up takes place during daylight hours only. 24-hour operations begin once electrical equipment and lights are in place, allowing rig personnel to work safely through the night. After the rig equipment is erected, a trenching machine installs a trench system around the drilling rig. The trenches act as a preventative barrier in the event of an accidental spill. At Chesapeake, 
We take pride in our good neighbor policy, making sure our operations are run efficiently while taking the surrounding area into consideration. This includes reducing disturbance to the environment. In residential areas, we utilize sound walls around the location. Sound walls are made of special material designed to absorb and deflect noise. Since the rig is operated day and night, Chesapeake takes great care to minimize possible sound and light disturbances as much as possible. After the well site has been carefully prepared to meet environmental, health, and safety standards, drilling can begin. This is an intricate operation requiring a well-planned infrastructure. A variety of processes and expert, well-trained specialists are used to bring natural gas to the surface. Chesapeake works with these experts during every aspect of the project while strictly adhering to all individual state regulations. During the drilling process, the rig is in constant operation 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, for approximately 21 to 28 days. As an added precaution in some areas, a protective mat covers two-thirds of the pad site. Utilizing heavy-duty industrial strength drill bits, a typical well is drilled in several stages, starting with a large diameter drill bit and then successively smaller drill bits as the drilling is advanced. After drilling each portion of the well, nested steel protective casing is cemented into place. This will protect groundwater and maintain the integrity of the well. Initially, and prior to moving in the drilling rig, a large diameter hole is drilled for the first 50 to 80 feet. Conductor casing is then cemented into place, stabilizing the ground around the drilling rig and wellhead and isolating the well from most private water wells. In the Marcellus area, the freshwater zone extends to approximately 800 feet below ground. The freshwater zone consists of porous sandstone and rock stratas containing water within the pore space of the rock. Chesapeake utilizes air drilling until the hole is advanced to an average of 100 to 200 feet below the base of the freshwater zone. This provides added protection to the freshwater zone. A series of compressors and boosters generate the air that is used to lift the rock cuttings and fresh water into steel bins. The rock cuttings are then disposed of within state guidelines and permits. The drilling equipment is retracted to the surface and stored for the second stage of drilling. To protect the integrity of the hole and to protect the surrounding deep freshwater zone, a second layer of steel casing, called surface casing, is installed and cemented inside the newly drilled hole and conductor casing. Cement is pumped down through the surface casing and up along the sides of the well to provide a proper seal. This completely isolates the well from the deepest of private or municipal water wells. A blowout preventer is installed after the surface casing has been cemented. The blowout preventer is a series of high-pressure safety valves and seals attached to the top of the casing to control well pressure and prevent surface releases. Next, a small drilling assembly is passed down through the surface casing. At the bottom of the casing, the bit drills through the float equipment and cement, continuing its journey to the natural gas target area as deep as 8,000 feet below the surface. The drilling method employed below the surface casing uses drilling mud, which is a non-hazardous mixture based on betonite clay or synthetic thickeners. In addition to lifting the rock cuttings out of the hole, drilling mud also helps to stabilize the hole, cool the drill bit, and control downhole pressure. A few hundred feet above the target shale, the drilling assembly comes to a stop. The entire string is retracted to the surface to adjust the drilling assembly and install a special drilling tool. This tool allows Chesapeake to gradually turn the drill bit until a horizontal plane is reached. The remainder of the well is drilled in this horizontal plane while in contact with the gas-producing shale. Drilling continues horizontally through the shale at lengths greater than 4,000 feet from the point where it entered the formation. Once drilling is completed, the equipment is retracted to the surface. Then, a smaller diameter casing, called production casing, is installed throughout the total length of the well. 
The production casing is cemented and secured in place by pumping cement down through the end of the casing. Depending on regional geologic conditions, the cement is pumped around the outside casing wall to approximately 2,500 feet above the producing shale formation or to the surface. The cement creates a seal to ensure that formation fluids can only be produced via the production casing. After each layer of casing is installed, the well is pressure tested to ensure its integrity for continued drilling. A cross section of the well below surface reveals several protective layers. Cement, conductor casing, cement, surface casing, drilling mud, production casing, and then production tubing through which the produced gas and water will flow. Seven layers of protection. Horizontal drilling offers many advantages when compared to vertical drilling. Since horizontal wells contact more of the gas producing shale, fewer wells are needed to optimally develop a gas field. Multiple wells can be drilled from the same pad sites. For example, development of a 1,280 acre tract of land using conventional vertical drilling techniques could require as many as 32 vertical wells, with each having its own pad site. However, one multi well pad site with horizontal wells can effectively recover the same natural gas reserves from the 1,280-acre tract of land while reducing the overall surface disturbance by 90%. In order to maximize the production potential of the well, the shale formation will be hydraulically fractured. In preparation for the fracturing process, the casing will be perforated in the horizontal portion of the well using tubing conveyed perforating guns containing explosive charges. The perforated intervals are spaced approximately 50 to 80 feet apart and create a connection between the production casing and the shale formation. With the initial perforating complete, the tubing and perforating guns are pulled to the surface and the workover rig is replaced by a hydraulic fracturing crew consisting of a number of high pressure pumps and blending equipment. This equipment will pump a mixture of water and propant, usually sand, through the newly created perforations in the production casing and into the shale formation. First, water is passed from a water storage impoundment into the blue working tanks depicted on this location. The water is then pulled into a hydration unit, which provides the ability to gel the fluid before it is transferred to the blender. At the blender, propant and a small amount of chemicals that aid in the fracturing process are added. The blender transfers the fluid and propant mixture to the pump trucks through the low pressure side of the manifold. The fracturing pumps increase the pressure of the fluid, sending it back through the high pressure side of the manifold to the fractory where it enters the well. The entire fracturing process is controlled from the treatment monitoring van. When the fracturing fluid reaches the perforations, pressure builds until the shale formation fractures, allowing fluid to enter into the formation. Additional fractures are created along natural zones of weakness in the shale. These fractures are contained within the shale formation, well below the ground. After an initial stage of fluid called the pad is pumped to create a fracture area, propant is added to the fluid and is distributed throughout the newly created fracture network. At the conclusion of the fracturing treatment, the propant allows the fractures to remain open so that the natural gas can flow into the production casing and to the surface. This completes the first of several stages in the fracturing process. This process is repeated by lowering and pumping down an isolation plug and perforating guns into the well bore to complete the next stage of fracturing. This time, the tools are conveyed into the well by a wireline unit, which allows the fracturing process to proceed much faster and more efficiently. A lubricator is used to control the pressure of the well while the operation is taking place. On the bottom of the perforating gun, a composite bridge plug is placed to isolate the newly fractured zone. This ensures that the subsequent fracturing treatment is contained in the current zone. The perforating gun is again fired at roughly 50 to 80 foot intervals creating a connection between the production casing and the shale formation. The fracturing process is then repeated until all of the stages are completed. A typical shale well has approximately 8 to 12 stages of fracturing. At the conclusion of the fracturing operations, the isolation plugs are removed from the well and production can start.
the produced fluids are diverted through a flowback manifold into storage tanks. The fluids are then recycled or disposed of according to state and federal regulations. After the completion of the well, it is time to start production and reclaim the site. The heavy machinery has moved on to the next well site, leaving just the production tree, the separator, and production tanks. Below the surface, at depths of more than one mile, the mixture of gas and fluid is flowing through the fractured shale. The mixture, containing predominantly gas, flows into the production tubing and up through the well bore to the surface. It is then diverted from the wellhead to the separator, which separates the fluid from the gas. If petroleum liquids, like condensate or oil, are produced, the separator will also separate the petroleum.